So really what we're talking about, what we're trying to accomplish by selling these calls, well, first of all, um, I'll just go ahead, it relates to capturing the time premium over the term. In other words, other, what happens is over the t life of this option, what's happening is the, the, uh, the part that relates to the life, the value that relates to that is disappearing because time is passing. But by selling these calls along the way, we're actually capturing some of that time premium along the way. Right. If you make a premature exercise, you are forfeiting whatever remaining time premium there is. Yes. If you exercise early, and there's a lot of time remaining, and it's a highly volatile stock, and the stock's not too far from the exercise price, the amount that you forfeit is quite big. Yes. If, indeed, you have held these things for nine years and you only have one year left and they, they give you the right to buy the stock at 20 and it's at 55 and it's not that volatile and pays halfway decent dividend, it, it may be just as well off by exercising them early, okay, because you, you, you delay the tax maybe one year yeah. uh, and you're not, uh, and the forfeiting of the time premium may be very small. Yes. So if you want to reduce risk, and you've held them for nine years and saw the stock go from 20 to 55, you've been assuming a, law, a, a risk uh, quite uh, intelligently, and then you were kind of lucky that it went up that much. So you might just go ahead and exercise them now okay. and uh, take the cash and pay the tax. No, but wait, but the, the, the time you, okay. you don't want to do it is when you've got plenty of time remaining, mm -hmm. you've got a high volatile stock, and the stock's not too much above the exercise price, and therefore has a lot of time premium left, which you would otherwise forfeit. Okay. okay. Now, what do you give up by hedging? You give up some potential gain, okay, okay. whether you're buying the puts or you're selling the calls. Uh, the, the amount of gain you give up depends upon how much hedging you do. I actually advise people to start small and do partial hedging, and therefore you always assuming a long uh, position and you still have this alignment with the company yes even though you only partially hedge yes okay okay so um, I think we've covered many of the points that we w I wanted to highlight here um, again so let's talk about some of the mechanics as far as how this works <clears throat> all right uh, you just opened an account at a brokerage firm Mm -hmm. Try to find the one that charges you the less, less commission and the minimum uh, margin requirements and uh, that you have faith in that uh, a stable, uh, stable outfit. And then you, you can execute the trades uh, electronically from your computer. Mm -hmm. You don't need to pay a broker or you might find some uh, wealth managers and investment advisors who know this and are willing to uh, guide you. Okay, now what sort of, we talked about what you can use for security, but for example, like a percentage or something like that, is, how does that work as far as w how much uh, you require, you have to put yeah, up? the margin that you have to put up in order to do this sort of a strategy? Well, uh, the minimum margin requirement uh, if you, uh, depends upon the exercise price of the calls that you're selling relative to the price of the stock. So, for example, if the stock is trading at 100 and you're selling calls to hedge your employee stock options, that may give you the right to buy the stock at 60. If you sell the calls that have a strike price of 110, the requirement for selling a call that gives a buyer the right to buy 100 shares will be Let's see, would be $1,000, okay? So it's 10% of the value of the stock, all right? 100 shares of stock with, uh, that's trading for $100 is worth $10,000. Mm -hmm. If you sell a call and it's an initial opening transaction, the minimum margin requirement is $1,000, which is 10% of the value of the stock. Okay. Okay. Now, when you're doing this, 
you're, all, you're, you're getting a premium as well. Yeah, you, well, you're collecting the, the, the value yeah. of the uh, so, call so, that you sell. So, so first of all, you had to put up some money, then you get a premium, and I guess you can recoup some, well, and then, no, so where do, you, where do you end up, you know, cash-wise as far as? Uh, if you don't have any stock in the company or yeah. other mutual funds or any assets to put yeah. in there, you're going to have to put up some money from your pocket in order to, to, in order to do this. Yeah. And uh, if you don't have any, uh, uh, then you may not be able to do it at all. Yeah. Okay. Some of the brokerage firms charge excess margin requirements. Mm -hmm. You can find the, uh, the better ones, and I can mention some names like Trade King mm -hmm. or uh, Options House. These people kind of focus on accommodating people that want to trade options and they have the, they, they'll charge a lesser margin but you don't want to stretch that up yeah. to, the, to the ultimate and just put up the minimum because you could get a movement against you and you get a margin call okay but, but, but I guess what my point is that we're getting some money from selling these options okay but that's and deposited that has to stay in the account so you'd have to put up some margin well, you're, in addition you're, you're saying that, okay. you're, so, you're, so we're not we're not going to end up being cash ahead no, necessarily. No. no, you'll get cash credits to your account. Yeah. But that will be will have to remain in your brokerage firm okay. account. Plus, you'd have to put up some money for the possibility of you having to pay more for those options than you sold them for. Okay. okay? And so, uh, but, but now people are going to be wondering. So, how do I end up ahead from all of this? Because now well, I'm having to deposit this. But, but I guess the point is, is that eventually this is going to settle out. And well, you know, if the stock goes up your employee stock options on it are going to increase a lot more than the, the hedges you did. Yeah, that's what we hope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it will, if, mm -hmm. unless you're overselling too many okay. and or buying too many puts. And, but the idea is to effectively make a sale mm -hmm. by selling these, of the employee stock options, by selling the calls. Yeah. And as I said, you don't want to lose the total alignment that you have with the stockholders and defeat the purpose of the plan, so you just do it gradually. Okay, In okay, John. Time to wrap it up. Okay. So we're covering a very heavy subject here, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, but I hope you also see, you know, I mean, this is an important subject. There is a way to realize what would otherwise be lost value in stock options. Um, John, thank you so much for coming. Uh, from Thank Louisiana you, to be I, with me today. I enjoyed it. It, just, uh, it was a real pleasure. You're, you're, you're a great host and, uh, and folks, certainly asked the right questions. Folks, uh, hope you can join us next time on Financial Insider Weekly.